ISIS has gained an edge by using social media to recruit and direct new attacks. But what if the U.S. and its allies could fight back by incorporating what ISIS does best? General Stanley McChrystal redefined counter-terror strategy while leading the Joint Special Operations Task Force in Iraq and Afghanistan. Instead of running every decision by a general, his approach emphasized sharing information and empowering those under him to act quickly. <coughs> he lays it all out in a new book. It's called Team of Teams, New Rules for Engagement. For a complex world, General Stanley McChrystal joins us at the table, and we're glad to have you here. We're going to touch on your book in just a second, but we want to hit the news of day. Michael Morell was here earlier. I saw you two cross paths in the green room. And he talked to us about a concern of a large-scale 9-11 attack, that he says it, it's not a question of if, it's when it's going to happen. Do you think we're doing enough to stop it? Well, I think we're doing a lot, but I think the problem is we tend to work in silos. And so we tend not to connect the pieces together. That was the story of 9-11. And the challenge in all of those kinds of threats is pulling the pieces of the puzzle into a single picture. Well, we thought we corrected that after 9-11. What happened? Well, organizations tend to drift apart. Plus, inside organizations, people tend to get in their desk, in their cubicle, in their office. And information becomes very difficult to share. And then things like WikiLeaks make people more cautious. They start to say, if I share information, I might get in trouble. If I don't share information, who's ever been punished for not sharing information? Mm -hmm. You've been at the top, of course, and made battlefield decisions. What worries you worse, the most about what's going on? Well, the fact that we are focused on ISIS as the problem. And I think that ISIS is a problem, but I think it's really a symptom of a much greater problem. I think if you think of the region as a body that has HIV AIDS, ISIS is that little disease that comes in when the immune system of the region has been weakened so much by instability and a lack of a political narrative. And so in reality, if ISIS went away tomorrow, we'd have a huge problem still in that part of the world. So if we don't look at the <coughs> fundamental problems, then ISIS or son of ISIS or grandson of ISIS mm -hmm. will be a problem for years and years to come. You say really the biggest challenge isn't often the enemy, but it's the environment that we're working in. And that, that, that covers many, many areas. When we were in Iraq in 2004, I had this extraordinary task force of superbly equipped and exquisitely trained small teams. That's what we were best at, and we were losing. And what we found was it was not al-Qaeda in Iraq, it was not Abu Musab al-Zarqawi as a huge leader, although he was effective. What we found was an environment in which information passed so fast and things were interconnected so much that complexity had hit a point where you couldn't operate in discrete teams and have an effect. You had to create a network that was organic in its ability to adapt. That's what al-Qaeda did. They didn't do it consciously, they did it automatically. What do you mean by team of teams? Well, team of teams really takes a, a small team that you're familiar with where people finish each other's sentences and has common trust and purpose, but you try to scale that. Suddenly, beyond about 100 people, it's really hard. But yet people in other organizations you mistrust because you don't know them, because their culture is different, their backgrounds are different. But what we've got to do is pull that team of teams. Think of the United States government, the different parts of the government or parts inside Department of Defense or anywhere. You've got to create linkages across those that create the same kind of sinew that inside a small team that you're so familiar with exists in a big team. It's really hard and it takes something we call shared consciousness, which is this radical level of transparency. Start to build information so that you can start to push down decision making through what I'd call empowered execution. You're really arming all of the people at the lowest levels to use their best judgment because now they have contextual understanding of what they have to do. And you're talking about how important it is, General, to adapt. You give three great examples of the plane crash in 1978, a United plane, where they ran out of gas compared to what Sully did when he landed the plane, the Boston Marathon <coughs> bombing with the doctors that had to adapt, and then the, the killing of Osama bin Laden. In each case, things did not go according to plan, but people had to adapt. And that's what you said we all need to keep in mind. That's exactly right. In the military, one of the great axioms is no plan survives first contact. So you do these detailed operations <laughs> orders, and then they never execute as you planned. And so you've got to build in the idea that it's always going to be different. So if you're not planning to adapt, yet our structures aren't that way. We create checklists. We create processes. We, we give orders to someone and we say, do this. Mm. But then the situation changes. They're there. They're far from you. And they're in the position, do I do what I was told or do I use my best judgment? If we don't get a culture where they are informed by information and empowered to use their best judgment, we fail. So best right, judgment right. is the way to go. Right. 
You yeah, have to remember is. that here on CBS this morning. Use your best judgment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, General McChrystal, great to have you here at the table. Thank you so much. Congratulations you. on the book. Thanks so much, Nora.